In this video, I'm going to show you what you need to do to create the linearized graph. So I'm assuming that you already know how to linearize a function. So now you just need to know how to create a graph of that linearized function, specifically how to title the axes, how to um, calculate the new error bars, things like that. So there are four steps to creating a linearized function, deciding what you need to plot on each axis, um, deciding how you're going to propagate error to make the calculation, filling out what's called a linearization table, and then linearizing in Logger Pro. Diving into step number one, this just means choosing your IV and DV for your linearized function, which I discussed in the previous video. Just as an important note, whatever function you perform on your variable, you also have to perform on the unit of the variable. So if you're squaring time, the unit the time is measured in is seconds, so the unit of your new squared axis is going to be seconds squared. So whatever you do to the variable, you have to do to the unit as well. So just as an example, if you have a clearly quadratic graph like this, you know based on the rules for quadratic functions that the height of this graph is going to be equal to some constant a times time squared. And you can see that to linearize this, I'm going to have to graph height on the y-axis and time squared on the x-axis, and that will produce this linear line. So the new units of this graph um, are still going to be meters on the y-axis, and on the x-axis it's going to be seconds squared because I'm squaring time. So if I were to answer on a lab report, what do you need to plot to linearize this graph? On the x-axis I put time squared seconds squared, and on the y-axis I put height meters. The units of slope for this graph um, as usual, are going to be the y units over the x units because slope is rise over run. And here for my linearized graph, my y units are m and my x units are s squared. So my units of slope are going to be meters per second squared, and the unit of the y intercept is still just the unit of the y axis, which in this case is still just m. One more example, let's say that you have a function that is clearly inverse, um, so you know that the relationship there is height is equal to a times 1 over time. To linearize this, you're going to have to put height on the y-axis still, and now you're going to have 1 over time on the x-axis, or time to the power of negative 1. So this means that the units will now be meters and 1 over seconds, or seconds to the power of negative 1. So that's what I would graph on the x and y-axis, and my units of slope would be meters divided by 1 over seconds, which when you carry out the math there is just meters times seconds. And the unit of the y-intercept would just be meters. So that's what you need to know and fill out for that first section there. Section 2 asks you to describe what you need to do to propagate error to make this calculation. So you're just going to write in words what you need to do to each of your measurements and each of your measurements errors to figure out the new error of each new linearized measurement. So um, if I had um, a quadratic function, height is equal to a times time squared, and I were propagating the uncertainty of time, this is what I would write under the section, what do you need to do to propagate uncertainty? Because I'm squaring time, I'd find the relative percent measurement uncertainty of each measurement that I have in the time section. And I'd multiply the relative uncertainty of each measurement by 2, because that's following the rules for what you do when you propagate uncertainty with powers. Um, and then you use that new percent uncertainty to find the new absolute uncertainty. I realize that this can sound a little confusing at first. I'm going to show you a tool you can use to make this much simpler in the next section. So this is section number three, the linearization table. This is something we use to make the process of finding the new linearized numbers and the new uncertainties easier. So a linearization table helps us find the new absolute uncertainties for each IV measurement after we have linearized the graph. So if you have a series of time measurements, as an example, and each time measurement has an uncertainty, and you're squaring every measurement, you're going to get new uncertainties as a result as well. And we care about these uncertainties a lot, because the uncertainties in the IV tell us how big or small the error bars will be. The error bars show us the size of the uncertainty. So we need to know what those new uncertainties will be after linearizing, and that's what we use this linearization table for. This linearization table has very specific expectations for what goes in each box. You should probably pause this video and copy down these specific rules in your notes. I'm going to be using an example of these in just a moment to show you how to fill it out. Okay, so I'll fill out an example linearization table. Again, what I'm trying to do is take my original IV measurements, perform the function that I need to perform on them to linearize the graph, 
And after I perform that function, whenever you perform a function on a measurement with uncertainty, you're going to have a new uncertainty as a result. So my only goal for this table is to figure out what are my new linearized numbers and what are the new uncertainties that go with them. Step number one is to take the IV measurements from your data table and just copy them over into your linearization table. So I'm imagining that this is my IV table and so I'm just copying these numbers over here. So I can see that I have five measurements, two, four, six, eight, and 10, and each has a measurement uncertainty of plus or minus 0.4 seconds. So each of these measurements is really two plus or minus 0.4, four plus or minus 0.4, six plus or minus 0.4. That's what this first thing is telling me. And I'm going to imagine that I need to square time to linearize this graph. That's what I've decided based on the pattern of the graph. So what my linearization table is going to tell me is what are my new squared numbers and what are the new measurement uncertainties that go with those squared numbers. So filling out the linearization variable is super simple. You just take your numbers and square them. So where you had two, now you have four, where you have four, now you have 16. You're just performing the function that you need to do to linearize the graph on your actual IV numbers. So that part's pretty straightforward. Okay. So this next part can get a little confusing. Remember, all I'm trying to do is figure out if I have two plus or minus 0.4 and I square that, what is my new absolute uncertainty of that new squared number? So to figure out what the uncertainty of a squared measurement is, you need to perform a function on its relative uncertainty, on its percent uncertainty. The rule for propagating error with powers is that you multiply the power by the percent uncertainty. So before we figure out these problems, we need to figure out what our new relative uncertainty of our new linearized variables is. So I'll give you the first um, problem as an example. That new measurement is two plus or minus 0.4. So the first thing that I wanna do because I'm squaring this number is I wanna know what is that 0.4 expressed as a percent uncertainty instead of an absolute uncertainty. And so I converted it from an absolute to a percent in that equation above my head. And you can see that 0.4 is 20% of two. So that means that that first measurement uncertainty is 20%. So when I square this, when I do what I need to do to linearize the numbers, I multiply the power by the percent uncertainty. So my new percent uncertainty of this measurement is 40%. That's what I get as a percent uncertainty after I linearize. So that's what I put in my linearization table. I write down that I calculated that the relative uncertainty of the squared value is 40%. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with the next measurement. I know that the measurement uncertainty of all my original IVs is plus or minus 0.4. So that next measurement is four plus or minus 0.4. And when I convert that 0.4 to a percent uncertainty, this one is just 10% uncertain. And so now that I'm squaring four, I also need to follow the rules for squaring uncertainties, which is just multiplying them by the power. So I find that after I square it, my new percent uncertainty is 20%. So that's what goes here. I keep following that out for the other three and this is what I get. So these percent uncertainties are the uncertainties of my new linearized numbers. So now that I have these, whenever I make error bars on a graph, those error bars always express absolute uncertainties. So we need to make sure that I have those new percentages expressed as absolute uncertainty for my error bar instead of the percent uncertainties. So what I'm gonna do is just figure out um, what is 40% of four, what is 20% of 16, what is 13% of 36, et cetera, because these percent uncertainties go with the linearized variable. So this is literally saying 40% of that four number is uncertain. And when I multiply 40% by four, this is what I get. When I multiply 20% by 16, 13% by 36, these are the answers I get. So these are my new absolute uncertainties for my IV. This was the goal of my linearization table, to get those absolute uncertainties that we can put on the graph as error bars. So now that I have those new uncertainties and those new times, those will be the only two things that I put on the graph. I don't care about the relative uncertainties. Those were just a way of getting to the absolute uncertainties so I can use them to make error bars. And I also don't care about the original IVs now that I have my linearized IV numbers. So all that's left to do is graph these new numbers. So that is gonna be the new IV x-axis and the one on the right is gonna be the new IV error bar. 
So all that's left to do now is to put these numbers into Logger Pro and create the new linearized graph. So I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so we're in Logger Pro and ready to linearize this unlinearized graph. You can see that the graph is quadratic and it has a simple y-axis of height and an x-axis of time. And I have my data up here in these tables with time, height, and also the error bars for time and height, which are creating the error bars on the graph. So the error for time is just 0.4 and the error for height is just 1. First thing I'm going to need to do is create those new linearized values for time, the things that I want to graph on my linearized graph. So I'm going to go to new calculated column because I know that I'm just squaring each number for time. I'm going to type in this is time squared and the units are seconds squared and I'm just going to tell the computer to take the values that I have for time like this and square them. So now I have a new column of time squared values, so I don't need to do the calculations if I haven't yet. And I also need those error bars that I got from my linearization table because that's going to be the value for each error bar on these new values. So I'm going to go to new manual column um, to type these in by hand and call this time squared error. The short name will just be t squared e. And the units will be the same as the time squared column, second squared. So now I have a place where I can enter in my error bars. So I'm just going to copy those from the table that I made. I'm going to set the time squared error to be the error bar for my regular time squared values like this. And now I'm ready to graph this. So instead of time, I'm going to say that on the x-axis I'm graphing time squared. And that's it. That's my linearized graph. And I'll be able to add maximum and minimum lines of best fit onto this graph, just like I do for any linear function. Just going to manual, making sure this is a linear line, hitting OK, clicking enable line drag. And so now I can find the maximum and minimum line of best fit for this graph, just like I would for any linear graph. And this is great because we had a quadratic graph that we couldn't do this for and couldn't easily find patterns for. And now we can find patterns using a maximum and minimum line of best fit on a simple linear graph. So that's the goal for linearization. Um, again, it takes some practice to get the steps down for this. But once you do, I find that it's actually more intuitive than students tend to expect. And we're just going to do this for basically every lab that we do in this course. So you're going to get good at it purely through repetition and practice.